Hi guys. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you. Um, oh my God, there's so much on my heart this week. And on God's heart. Um, so this will be a combo of, of what's on my heart and what's on his heart. Over the past few weeks, and I know I usually um, pray now, but I'm going to save the prayer for the end because I'm going to pray for something really specific. Um, over the past few weeks, um, I've heard so many stories of well-known pastors either leaving the ministry or getting caught in nefarious positions. Um, and um, getting caught by the public or whatever, or just leaving because they're tired. And I was like, or they're, they've gotten caught in something and they don't want people to actually find out and they want to get help before that, so they just choose to sit down. And in the midst of this, I was like, Lord, what's going on with your people? And he, and he said in my spirit, spirit it's, it's a shaking. Um, it's almost like what whatever will be shaken is being shaken right now. And he's saying for, to all his believers, just end tough. He's still on the throne. But saying all that, my heart is just broken because the church... Um, in the Western world, at least, seems to be bleeding and hurting and hemorrhaging, both in the, um, in the pulpit and in the pews. I, we don't, we, we just seem to be having church, um, but it, I shouldn't say it's not helping. It helps people every week, either online church like I go or um, in-person church, which is happening again. But it doesn't seem to be reaching, like, the pain of people. And it, and it doesn't seem to be, um, like grabbing people in a way that it should. I think I think we need to stop with the show. I think we need to stop with church being like a concert and a, and like let's say a 45 minute or 25, 45 or an hour sermon. I think um I think we need to change how we do church. Uh, I think we need to ask the Lord in these changing times, how best are we to spread the gospel? Uh, about, um, I did an old sermon called uh, living, um, living Dangerously. And I talked about asking dangerous questions. I think it's so, I think it's so easy to coast, to just show up at church and do your church liturgy, whether it would be to uh, 
sing three songs and then hear a sermon and then dismiss it, go home, or sit in church for an hour, let the choir sing for an hour, whatever your church routine is. I think it's so easy to get in contact, to get stuck in that cycle that we don't even look up and see what is going on. Like, we see what's going on, but we, at the same time, we stick to our same liturgy, whatever our liturgy is. And I think it's time uh, as um, leaders and pastors and people of the gospel to break out of that liturgy and, and bow down and say, God, how do you want to structure your church? How do you want us to meet the needs of your people, both in the pulpit and in the pews? Because in the pulpit, people are bleeding and people are... People are dying, people are overworked, people are tired, um, people are committing criminal acts, uh, people are just, just so stressed out. And, um, and in the pews, people are going through the same thing in, as people are going through in the pulpits. And nobody's being held to account. And nobody's, uh, like, and then safety's compromised, and then all of this stuff happens. I think there needs to be a shift in how we do church. I think how we, we do church should depend on the issues in your city and where you are and who you are. I think um, it, it, we need to do away with the this is how church is supposed to be done. Uh, the sixth member worship team, uh, the worship songs, and then the preaching. We don't need to do away with that totally. I'm not saying that. No, we will always be preaching. We'll always be corporate worship. But the way we do it needs to vary, needs to be God-centered, God-led, and not just, oh, we, we do it this way, and we'll ask God to show up. No, no, no. Like, it's just, it's just like, um, the pandemic, um, I, I believe was supposed to teach us something. We were supposed to pause and reevaluate how we did church. We're not supposed to pause and just wait till things get back to quote-unquote normal. What is that? It's, there's no, there is no normal. It's just the way God leads you to structure things. I see things turning around where there is no structure. Um, no set structure. Like, I, I don't mean no set structure at all, because the Lord does things in decency and in order, but where where churches are run differently, depending on um, depending on where you are, depending on the personality of the pastor, depending on what God leads you to do, depending on what um, what demonic things are in your area and tackling those things. Because I think um, done with, the church needs to be done with our heads being buried in the sand and just 
well, we'll sing two or three songs, get happy, and then go home. The world is dealing with real issues, not just the world, but the real issues, because they're not being dealt with, are bleeding inside the church. And God's heart is breaking because we are just acting like it's no big deal. It is a big deal. When molestation happens to 12-year-old girls, it is a big deal. When, when pastors step out and have affairs, it is a big deal. When all these things are happening, it's a big deal. And if we don't face it as a community in love, it'll get worse. And then where are we, church? It's just, it just breaks my heart. It just breaks my heart because it just seems like the, it just seems like, it's just, we're just going around uh, singing our two and three songs and stuff and preaching whatever, like, wh look around. Look around. The world is hurting. They need Jesus. They don't need your ideology. They don't need your, you know, judgment. They need Jesus. The world needs the real Jesus. And what I love about Jesus is he said to me, he said, don't, he said to me, don't pay attention so much on what I did. Pay attention to how I did it. And Jesus confronted the issues of his day. And he was not ashamed to do so. And he didn't care one lick about what people said. And they killed him for it. He rose again, but that's another story. But he was unashamed to address these issues. We seem to be, we seem to be afraid to talk about these things. We see, we need we need some structural changes. We need places where pastors can go when they're hurting. I think about um, Robert Morris. I think about Carl Lenz. I think about um, uh, Tony Evans. I think about all these pastors, and I think about. What would it be like if they had some place where they could say, look, I'm struggling with this. Look, I'm dealing with this. Look, I'm thinking about, you know, this and just get love and support and resources. We need to change the way we're doing things because people are hurting in the pulpit and in the pews. And if you don't address where people are hurting, church is going to get worse. And there is hope. Jesus is the hope, yes. But we are but we are called as leaders and as pastors to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And if we cannot be there for our leaders and for people affected by rape and abuse and molestation. And if we can't confront issues the way Jesus did, what are we doing? Like, seriously, what are we doing if we can't do that? If we can't be a place where both the pulpit and the pews can get help. I think I I think there needs to be a shift in how we do church. Um, there, like it needs to be. There are so many things that are going on. We need to 
I suggest every pastor, every leader, go to the Lord and with a pad and the paper and say, Lord, for my area, for my for my corner of the world, how do you want me to do this thing that best glorifies you? I don't care how I did it when we started. I don't care if, if it's working. I don't care whatever. How do I, as a pastor, best serve your church and just sit with a calendar and with a pad of paper and let him speak to you? The Lord is very specific. If he can do, do that with Noah and the ark and um, David and the temple, he can definitely do that now. He's speaking, but we're not listening. And we're not hearing the cry of people. There's a cry that's going out. You could say it's the last day we're waiting for Jesus to come. I don't think that I know that's not it. He's saying there's a cry. There's a cry that we have to address because we have the answers. We need to be a place where people can come when they're hurting, that that addresses like real issues, that talks about real things, like that kind of kind of addresses real issues like abuse and stuff like that. And I'm not saying to do it um, in a judgmental way. I'm saying, why not have, instead of a sermon, why not have someone, a professional, come and talk about uh, uh, the signs of abuse, what to do when you think people are being abused. And, you know, it's just not not only abuse, but different different issues. Like, because, you know, if you don't confront the real, the real will confront you. And that's what's happening with the church now. Because we haven't, we haven't done a good job of confronting the real. So now the real is confronting us. And if you don't confront something, eventually it will confront you. And the Lord, I can feel the Lord's heart breaking because he loves his church. He loves the pastors. He loves the people that have been abused. He loves all those people and he just wants us to be better. He wants us to be freed. He doesn't want us to be in darkness. The church was never never designed to just be fine. We'll sing a few songs, get hyped up by the sermon, and, you know, whatever, and go home. We are meant as the church to foster change, to be the catalyst, to be in in where decisions are being made, to be in rooms where uh, laws are being made, to be in rooms where, like, we're meant to be in the thick of it. We're just not meant to be, like, a club where we get together once a week and woohoo! Nope. No, we are meant to be a catalyst for change. We are meant to be right in the thick of the mess. We are meant to bring hope to people. 
We are meant to share the love of Jesus and the good news with people. And that's that's what we are meant to do. And it is it is so sad because like while while we're having our our worship things or while we're while we're having church, the world is dying. Um, pa- pastors are committing crimes. Um, just all these things are happening, and so some people have eventually. Uh, people have to say. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. And every pastor has got to ask, what's the best way to deal with this issue at my church? Because God, or the church you've given me, I should say, because it's not your church, it's, it's Christ church, but the church you've given me, what's the best way to confront issues with the church and the resources that you've given me. Um, Because it varies from church to church, from pastor to pastor. And if you ask that question and are open to the changes he wants to make, we will see astronomical growth. If the pastors could get out of the out of the feeling that church has to be done this way and really get into into um, really be open into how God wants to do it in the church He's given you. You, you will see astronomical. We will see astronomical growth in the body of Christ if we throw away what we think churches and and are open to now what God is doing and what God wants to do. We will see just healing. We we'll see just real healing and real growth and real real issues being confronted because every de- every church has different issues. Every area has the gospel is the same wherever you go, but every area has specificities to it. Has issues that the Lord wants to deal with that and he put you there to deal with those specific issues in a way he tells you to you know and he wants us to begin to look at our communities look at where we are and confront the real issues that are going on be a help, be a source of strength, be a source of water to the therapy, um, to the thirsty in our in our own communities. He wants to open the eyes of pastors and bishops everywhere and say, Lord, how do you want me to um uh, what what are the issues in my city, in my community that you want me to address? And how do you want me to address them? And how do you want me to shift our gatherings together to best service you, to best glorify you first? And to best help people. Um, 
because the gospel is the same where wherever you go in the world, but the way he wants each pastor and each leader to structure their church is different um, based on the personalities and based on based on their personalities and what things are around, what needs are around in their church. And even sometimes it's the same need, but he wants you to address it differently in your area um, based on your resources and uh, the, the, ch- the church you're a part of. Um, for, for one church, homelessness in the city could be partnering with a, a, a homeless situation, uh, a, a homeless shelter that it's already doing that and giving more vo- volunteers. And in another city, it may be to start something. So it all depends where he's placed you. Open your ears and your eyes to see what he wants to do in your church and forget the way we did it 10 years ago. Forget the way we even did it uh, four years ago. Forget it. Be open to the way God wants to do it now. And he'll speak to you when he's waiting to speak to you. Um, He just totally, his heart is broken. He's still sovereign and on the throne. But in that, in that too, his heart is broken because so many people are hurting. Um... And he's, he loves you. He loves you. And he wants the best for you, dear. Whether you're a pastor or a person in the pews. He loves you and he wants the best for you. And I think so many times we just get, get, confused and mired and messed and for and met and mess and forget that God it God just so loves you and he's a restorer and I'm here to tell you that whatever you're going through whether you're in the pulpit or in the pew you're not alone there is resources and there is help. And if you feel yourself struggling with anything at all, reach out for help. Reach out for help. And the first person you reach out to, and the first being you reach out to is the Lord. Be honest with God. Tell him how you're struggling. Tell him where you are. He doesn't need pretty words at this point. He needs you to be honest about where you are and what you're facing. And then you need to you need to be honest with someone around you, whether it be a, th- a therapist or a friend. I I was I was. I've been um, going through some personal um, family stuff with my immediate family. And the person I used to talk to about things is not, is not there anymore. And the Lord's, there was this book. It wasn't a Christian book, but I said... I said to the Lord, I really want to to talk about this book with someone. And do you know 
he sent one of the ladies that worked with me and I was able to share that book with her being that the person I used to share things like that with is no longer there. So he sends he sends what you need if you're honest with him. A lot of people just play with just are not honest with God. They don't believe they can be honest with God. Listen, God's not gonna hit you over the head. He loves you with that. And if he's going to correct you, he's going to do it in a way that you will respond to it. But usually, he'll just love you until you uh, can't take it. He'll he'll love you until he'll love you until you want to change because this love is so great. Like I want to be better. I want to live up to this love, not like I have to work for your love. I don't, your love is free, but I want to be a person that that can absorb this love and take it in. And he'll just do stuff like that. It's just awesome. He'll send you what you need if you're honest with him. He generally God won't invade your space. But if you come to him and say, Lord, I'm struggling, he'll send you re- the right resources and the right people. He'll send you people to talk about books with or, you know, whatever you need. He'll he'll guide you to the resources. If your heart and if your mind is open to that, he's just waiting to love you. He's just waiting to love you and tell you that you are his beautiful child. Despite what mistakes you've made, he's just waiting to love you. He's just waiting to love you so much. And there's nothing that you've done and nothing you're about to do that he can't forgive. Um, that he can't bring you back from. He wants to restore you. He wants to free you. He wants you to know that you are his. And you're, t- are you tired of doing things on your own. He doesn't want you to do things on your own. He wants to be your perfect partner. I I did a sermon a few weeks ago called The Ultimate Partner. How I talked about how God wants to be your first ultimate partner. And when you know God, you get to know you get a good sense of the human partners he wants in your life and the human partners uh, to stay away from. Because um, if you model your relationships after what he gives what his relationship with you is like, he'll give that to you, not to replace him, but he'll give you that to you on a human level. He'll give you a human form of love, which is, which is love like his. And it won't be the same because he's God and he will never replace himself but he'll give you the human form of love in the form of a person. And he'll teach you how to trust and he'll teach you how to love. There there is no love relationship greater 
the relationship of of the Lord to his church. It's, it's just amazing. And um, his heart is broken. On one, on one level, he's, he's sovereign like he knows all and sees all, but his heart is still broken. It's broken because he loves you, and he knows that we can do better. He's saying, why isn't anyone asking me what to do? and really wanting to know the answer. He said, just ask me what to do. Just ask me how best to service uh, your community where you are. Just ask me. I have all the answers. I have all the answers of what issues I want the church of give, giving you to tackle. Not every church can tackle every issue, but there are certain issues that he wants certain churches to tackle. And sometimes times he may want you to partner with another church so you guys can tackle the issue together. And your structure of your service may be different, will be different, if you're open to that. The Lord wants to do a new thing, but it's not, will he do a new thing? It's that, are are you open to the new thing he wants you to do? All he needs right now is your yes. All he needs right now is your yes. And he wants to stop the bleeding and create something new. But he needs your yes. He needs your yes. Heal me, Lord. He needs your yes. Come into my situation and restore them. He's the God of restoration. And he wants to restore today. He wants to heal today. He wants to make new today. He wants to, uh, he wants to, he wants to make you new today. Like, like nobody's business. Cause there's a you that he sees that you don't know is there. And he wants that you to come out. And, but I'm not saying that he has a better you, but I'm saying he sees you in all your facets. And he loves you just the way you are. But at the same time, he sees the you that he wants you to be. Not the you that you think you should be. The you that you think you should be is not really you. It's just something that you've gotten from somewhere. But he sees the child in you. He sees the grown man in you. He sees the pain in you. He sees the joy in you. And in all of that, he still loves you and wants you and wants to shower you with all grace, all peace, and all power. And thank you, Lord. And I pray, Lord Jesus, for your church right now, God. We're hemorrhaging, we're bleeding, God, and we need you to come down with your Holy Spirit and change us, reveal to us what you want our our different churches to be, the demons that you want our different churches to go after, reveal to us the structural changes that you want in our services, God. 
reveal to us that we all don't have to be the same, that you've called us to be different. You've called us to pastor differently. You've called us to lead differently. Show us, show each pastor today, God, how you want, how you want them to lead. Holy Spirit, speak, oh Lord, speak to us how we need, what issues we need to deal with and how we need to deal with them in, in our churches, oh God. Lord Jesus, show us your power. Come down, Holy Spirit, and comfort us. Comfort those who are broken. Comfort those who are hurting. Comfort those who need healing, God. We're so broken, Lord God. We need you to fix us, God. We need you to restore us, God. We need your power. Enough with the show. We need you, God, in a special way, God. Come come down, Lord. Your girl your girl needs help. Your girl your baby is now crying out for help. Your baby's now crying out for restoration. Your baby's crying out for peace. Your baby's crying out, Lord Jesus, for healing. Your baby needs power. We've lost ourselves in the business and and the show or the production of church. We need to get back to not only the heart of worship, and uh, but what was it? What was it originally supposed to be? The church was supposed to be, and still is, about you, how you died on the cross, and how you died for healing, died for our purpose, died for our peace, died for our brokenness, died for our misplacement. You died you died because you loved us. And Lord, let us show your love. Let us show your love in a strong way. Lord Jesus, let your love strengthen us. A lot of people think love is weak, but love is really strong. Let us show your love to those who are marginalized in the homeless community, in the LGBTQ community. Lord Jesus, let us show them how strong your love is. So instead of turning away, they would want what we have. And your love will not only cover a multitude of sin, but it will restore us to the original people that you want us to be, Lord God. Help us. Drench us in power. Drench us in your spirit. Paraclete, come and comfort us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. When I said paraclete, paraclete, that's just another name for the Holy Spirit. Okay, guys, I'll see. I'll see you later. Get him all shit out of Get him all shit. Overflow in us, God. Fill us up, Lord God, till we overflow. Give us revelation about what you want us to do. Change us and burn up everything that is not of you. Even if it's things that we've been doing since our church started, if it's not relevant anymore, Lord Jesus, burn it up. Until you and what you want and what you desire is all we have left. 
Lord Jesus, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Speak to us. Speak to every pastor. Speak to every pastor. Speak to every minister of the gospel, God. Speak to us. Speak through us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Speak to every heart. Touch every hurt. Go into the marrow of every bone and heal, restore, deliver, refresh us. Send a fresh anointing. Send a fresh wind, God. Lord Jesus, I plead the blood over every foul spirit, every broken heart, oh God. I plead the blood and claim renewal and claim restoration by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of your blood, by the power of your love, by the power of your peace. In the name of Jesus, sweep the streets, O God. Purify us, O God. Make us new. Make us whole. Make us holy. Make us separate, Lord God. Teach us what it means to be holy. Holy is not an outside thing. It's, it's an inside thing. Teach us to be holy and how to be separate and how to show the world to be more like you. Teach us. Teach us, restore us, because Lord, we're ashamed to say that we don't know, Lord, but we need you to teach us, to let us know where we're going wrong, to let us know where we're, where we're failing and falling so we can do right. But at the same time, let us know where we're doing right where we're where we're winning where we're where we're being a champion because we know in every church there are things that we need to work on and things that we've got right on the money lord god humble us humble us burn up everything that is not like you in the name of jesus amen amen Okay, guys, I will see you later. Take care. Bye.